18th century, here we go again. But this time I won't be speaking about uh, costuming and all the things related to this, but I'll be speaking about martial arts. And one of the things that hooked me on this, uh, this era when, uh, when <laughs> different friends told me that I was just looking like Sam Hugan uh, in Outlander, well, uh, I'm not much inspired by the, the idea of uh, look-alike, but one they point me toward the Jacobite wars, and well, they just hooked me. Yeah. So uh, I read several books on uh, on the period and uh, the era and how they can fight was also one of the aspects I tried to explore and one of the, the things that uh, also inspired this uh, little video is my uh, little experience as a gladiator thanks to ACTA. Well, one of the books also that uh, came uh, in, the, in the process here of uh, my ideas is uh, this little book the Expert Swordman's Companion by uh, Donald McBain. This book, there. And uh, there is uh, basically two parts in the book. Uh, in your book, you will have one part when uh, he explains uh, different lessons and principles. It's not like uh, some of the books concerning uh, swordsmanship, and you'll see more medieval books where you have step by step. Sometimes really, really something that is here to help you learn or teach something. Here you have a guy which is more like depicting principle, big ideas, and sometimes illustrate here with a. Uh, I'm not even sure that he, he draw the, the little uh, <coughs> characters there, but it's also about understanding the, the whole dynamic and the principle. And the end of, uh, of the book is about uh, his, uh, his experience, his life. And God, he went through messy places and uh, have some harsh experiences. Well, I for sure have an easy life compared to him and most of us, yeah. So, well, let's start about uh, what I think we can do with a dick, a shield and a sword and what uh, is perhaps something you won't see much but which according to me is perhaps a better option than the traditional way of using. A dick and a shield. So, in order to help you understand, I brought there a mannequin, and you will see what I mean by using a shield in a different way. I don't mean first it at your opponent's face, but simply just using it in order to not disadvantage you in in a fight in a in a duel because I, I think that uh, the author experience was military one yes uh, for what I read but also uh, some situation he described were very skirmish like or dual like and uh, when you are using a shield in the 18 century it's not like using a shield when you are during the 13th century or during uh, the I don't know the the Gallish Wars with uh, the loud scutum or even uh, before with the Greeks and uh, the huge and run plan. no that's not the same thing that's not the same thing and all you want to be making a shield wall or so stuff like this not at all this shield uh, I don't think, once again, that will be used the same way because what you'll be facing is uh, 
really different. This shield, like every shield, actually mustn't cover your sight. You have to know where your opponent is anytime. It's really important. And uh, that's one of the principles he, he told in the book. He said, when you have an opponent that have not much experience with a shield and is carrying a shield, try to bring the shield up toward his face in order to let him cover his sight and use this as an advantage to deliver a blow to the knee, to the leg or perhaps to the groin, whatever come beneath the shield. So he advised you not to cover too high your face because right here actually I can't see. When I bring up my shield I can't see what's in front of me here. I see my opponent. When I'm here I can't see much. Actually I can see just his foot. Yeah, I can know where he is because of the foot but when he, he say this, I imagine that it's mostly because we're inexperienced, fighters or duelists will do that and won't see where is the opponent. Because of perhaps of panic and cover the face, because yes, of course, you have to cover your face. <laughs> well, imagine the damages you will have by a blow on the face. Yeah, that would be big deal, really big deal. So most of the time, I see people carrying the deck that way with the pointy end down which yes allow when you stab to uh, a much efficient uh, technique because yes it's probably easier to go through fabric and then someone's body by using this motion it's probably yes easier because well every time someone see a dagger they grab it like that because for the stabbing but a dagger is also effective to stab this way and one other thing I uh, think uh, could be done is using it like uh, we can do as uh, an oplomacus like an oplomacus did in uh, in the arena so uh, this gladiator fought with a shield a spear and a dagger and this dagger I'll use it like I will I will use it as an oplomacus could be in my left hand or in my right hand. It's also easy to change hand like this when you have the, the dagger with the blade up. With the blade up here and also I'll use it with the, the sharp part toward me. Well, once again, it could be surprising and everyone will be like yeah, but if the sharp end is toward you and the pointy end also is up, you have much more chances to be stabbed by your own blade. But actually, well, uh, according to the to what I see, uh, it would be very really hard to come there and restab really yourself here, especially if you carry it at the point at the front. Here, you can cover the face without having much problem and I do guess that putting once again the thumb here on the balls let's say of the dirk will help also to uh, control the motion and by using the dirk that way you can when you come close to your opponent because apparently there was uh, a lot of uh, very close quarters uh, during uh, the Jacobite Wars and also uh, it's something that uh, is really uh, anticipated in the, in the book that you can just come close to your opponent, throw him 
on the ground, so there's a bit of, of wrestling coming around. And if you came close, you can perhaps use this dirk to just pass on the side, cut when you come back, like this, or simply directly stab for the face, body. I don't think it's, uh, it's perhaps a better idea to do that and stay covered. Also, by keeping the, the blade up like this, you can prevent, you can parry what's coming also to your face a bit more. It can come as a parrying dagger and if the blade of your opponent slide on the blade, on the dick, you have your shield to protect your hand. So it could be a good option to keep in mind this. And also by using the dagger with the point down, I'm, well, I'm too afraid that you could stab well, that's something that could happen. Yeah, actually. Here, yeah, I do think that you could stab your own thigh. And there is no, nothing uh, coming out, you see. There isn't, there isn't much coming out of the shield when you are using it that way. But when you are using it, like I present you, you see how much, how much is out of the shield and I do believe that this fact that you have a longer portion of the, the dagger coming out of the, of the shield give also what's very important in a fight range a distance and you keep your opponent a bit away from you but just if you are able to use your both and, as I said, you can protect down, eventually parry down there. You use the shield to protect your body. Continue a long distance. Work with the with the sword, and if by I don't know why the reason, but there is plenty of reason your opponent would come closer, you can just go and stab him on the face, on the neck. Remember that there is no armor, no gambeson and padding like this that make the, the stabbing and the cutting more difficult. But here, during the 18th century war, the guys were just like uh, wearing civilian clothes. There's no more armor. So, it's really much easier to cut someone or to stab someone. You don't have to bring the same uh, motion to go through an armor as going through uh, a costume. So, keep in mind this as well. And by using dagger like this, once again, I do believe you have a better chance of keeping first a sight at your opponent, keeping him away from you and also you will probably protect yourself a bit more. It presents a lot of advantages that I, uh, I really thought about and uh, the only way to be sure would be to try it again, again and again in a in dual and skirmish like situation which I haven't been much able to try so far few duels just that and I'd like to, uh, to continue to try it test this I'll see uh, I'll see in the future uh, what can I do for that and I hope I'll be able to bring you different uh, videos where I present perhaps not only dual but also a skirmish situation with uh, perhaps four fighters perhaps six 
at best, yeah, could be good. And we'll see with this equipment what could be done. We'll see if, uh, yes, the dagger, when you use it with the pointy end toward the ground, if there is someone with, in a hurry will just, boom, stab his own thigh. If it happened, well, yeah, it could happen, so we'll see. And the same will come there. If someone carrying the dagger this way, or, well, and is able to stab himself, well, that will uh, bring uh, proof that it's dangerous as well. So, this is a theory so far for, for the Dirk and the Taj. I'm not sure that this is like the only way to use it. I'm not saying this. I'm not telling you that I'm right and it's period. No, I'm just bringing here an option that I haven't been, yeah, that I haven't been really showed off in a... Uh, in media so far I haven't seen it much and perhaps I'm wrong and there is a uh, plenty of example but also I should perhaps read once more uh, something uh, related to the 18th century and uh, perhaps the Scots see what could be found there and I hope this uh, video have been uh, interesting about what could be done with the Dirk which is according to what I saw so far, quite unconventional and came also from a different background that uh, regular swordsmanship. If I haven't been trained as a gladiator by ACTA, I wouldn't probably even think about, uh, about this. Because as a gladiator, when you use the Dirk, oh, no, it's not a Dirk, it's a Dagger. Well, when you use your spear there and you just wait for your opponent to come and try to uh, cut you on the left shoulder. You use your big shield to prevent this and you can pass on the side and cut beneath his arm there on the side of the back. Because you just search a cut on the back as a gladiator. But I twist the intention, I keep the same ID with a dagger up and with someone that uh, want to kill me or perhaps if it's a, a duel would just search for the first blood and just a little stab there on the shoulder, on the chest or as I say face or neck and your opponent could be just stopped and not asking for more. I hope this uh, won't be too confusing. I'll come back on uh, on the talk about it for sure. And this time I hope with uh, full Ima gear. And we'll try with a friend something with a basket sword, shields and deer. And by the way, if you are curious about how I made this costume, well, there is uh, videos about this on my channel, so feel free to check and there is plenty of other things concerning martial art and history as well on the channel from antiquity, medieval ages and even imaginary uh, universe like Middle Earth. Have a great day!